I enter the path of male experience. Welcome to the Pat Mayo Experience, presented by DraftKings. It's finally here. Opening night in the NFL, which means we need to talk about the million dollars up top on DraftKings. So a complete DraftKings showdown, picks and preview and strategy show for showdown and how to use all of these tools to give you the best advantage to get to the very top of these contests, or at least, you know, split it with fewer people than probably you're used to if you're going to try to get to the top. But we got Lions at Chiefs. We got injuries. Plus, we need to talk about the season-long ramifications of Travis Kelsey going down and how long he may be out, if at all. And we're getting, like, conflicting reports now about the severity of this injury. So we can only talk about it in the context of what we know. But fortunately, it's the first game. You'll have time to find a replacement on all of this. The season long, or actually the week one DraftKings Listeners League is now available down in the description. Smash the like, sub to the channel while you're here, and use runthesims.com. It is free for Thursday night. Ever a time to get into it? This would be the time to go give it a test drive. Code Mayo will always get you a 10% discount as well if it's something that you want to do throughout the course of the season. Justin Freeman, On the line with me right now, you're the one who punches in these projections. I saw you pulled Travis Kelsey from the system pretty quickly. Yeah, it was tough. We were waffling all day yesterday on what to do, what to do. And it's like as more and more of the uh, beat writers, the Schefters, the Rappaports, all those guys start using the word doubt, uh, we start leaning towards taking them out. So, uh, yeah, we're we're now looking at a world where uh, Travis Kelsey may not suit up. And so what's funny is since then, like this morning, the news is getting slightly more rosy. It looks like they're leaving a light on for him. So, uh, yeah, I, I don't think we'll be out super long term. But, yeah, you got to got to be on top of the news for sure yeah we're, we're probably not going to be having much travis kelsey in our lives on thursday night that's pretty safe to say at this point well you know it seems that way uh but the word coin flip was used uh earlier today by one of the uh i believe edwin porus uh who's got a, a good reputation for being on it with with uh sports injury news for fantasy guys and then also jason kelsey came on like a local uh radio station in philly and talked about Travis's injury and said that uh, it's it's a pretty minor deal. He's got some swelling on his knee. Uh, he thinks that if they can get the swelling to go down, he's got a shot. So uh, we'll see. It's it's truly like uh, you know if you think about how this works out, yeah, in terms of the schedule of the week. You know, you're not going to fully know until 90 minutes before kickoff. 90 minutes before kickoff is when every team submits their inactives. If Travis Kelsey is active, you better believe he's going to be out there. I uh, would have a hard time imagining him being used as a decoy in week one of the season. So, yeah, it's, if he's playing, we're firing him up. And if he's uh, not playing, which is still what we expect, uh, we're going to find other options. Well, let's jump over to runthesims.com right now. Once again, if you just sign up with an email, you can get access to what is available for Thursday night, by the way, just the Thursday night simulator and optimizer. Yeah, that's ex- exactly right. So, yeah, you would go into the uh, RTS Sim Runner and you'd be the, be able to run your DraftKings Showdown lineups for Thursday night. So that's going to be super helpful uh, as you're building. You can get a sense of sort of how we approach things, how the market shares add up for each player, how you have the ability to tweak all of those things and get custom lineups that match the types of lineups that you think are most likely to populate towards the top of the leaderboard. And so we help sort of... Uh, a, make everything a, a bit more objective in terms of how you approach things, give you a good chance to enter in. Like if, if you've ever only ever been sort of like a single entry type player, you can still play single entry, but this may give you the tools to um, maybe play uh 20 max or a 150 max at a, you know, a lower stakes or something like that. So lots of reasons to jump in and try it out. Yeah. Just, just looking at the new allocations right now, obviously Travis Kelsey is out. And if, listen, if he's going to be active, you will put in the Travis Kelsey numbers that are not zero that go along with this. But if you did just want to get ahead of the curve, if you have a feeling that Kelsey is going to play, you can go in and manually adjust all the stuff and run your own custom Sims if that's something that you want to do as well. So just, you know, to get an idea about that going forward. One thing that I did want to do before we do anything, though, is try to figure out, oh, there's the, there's the tools. Uh, if we go to the Sim Runner right now, Uh, We can take a look at different slates throughout the week. So we can do the main slate on different sites, but we can also, I like to just do the DraftKings Thursday through Monday that gives us every single game. You can go in and tweak any game you want. And in this right now, we have no Travis Kelsey. So if we were looking for a pickup 
for our season long fantasy football league. Uh, if we just go over to the Sim Runner Pro on the right hand side, top right hand side, and just take the take it how it is. Hit the Sim Runner Pro, boom, we will simulate a lot of these games and they'll give you DraftKings lineups. They'll tell you who the plus EV players are. Uh, we broke this down all last week when you explained how the Sim, both the simulations work in terms of game simulations and how the simulations work in terms of simulating DFS contests at the same yes, right. time. But what I'm looking for here is the projections. By week, this says every player in the player pool who's playing in week one, but just go to tight end with no Travis Kelsey and see if we can come up for a replacement. So the projections will tell us. Let's reveal the answer here. Mark Andrews, okay, probably not going to be able to pick him up, although he's got like kind of hurt too, which is weird. And same as Kittle. We did. We were going to need more information on those guys. Hawkins, so it's Andrews, Hawkinson, Kittle, Ingram, Waller, Goddard, Pitts, Fryermuth, Higby. All those guys probably drafted. All those guys were ranked inside the top 10 uh, in most people's rankings, including mine, which you can find down in the description for week one right now, or just get it at DraftKingsNation.com. After that, though, you have Dalton Schultz, Irv Smith, David Njoku, Dalton Kincaid, which I think you're out to lunch with a projection that high, but that's me, Gerald Everett, Okongwo, the Laporta Potty on Thursday night, Jawan Johnson, Hayden Hurst. Like, and all those guys are within what a point and a half of each other. So you can kind of pick your poison. There are options out there that you can go get. Yeah, that's exactly what I was going to say, Pat. Once you get to this tier, everyone's projection looks almost identical. Like we're, we're talking a bunch of guys who we all think are kind of in that same sort of bucket. So when I think about guys who are likely not drafted in your 12 team league, I my my eyeball goes immediately to Irv Smith. And I think Irv Smith is a. I've been saying this kind of off season, all off season. I think he's a super sneaky pick because you think about the offense that he plays in. He's going to struggle to gain targets, obviously, over Jamar Chase and T. Higgins. But being in a Joe Burrow led offense, there's there's a lot of volume to go around. This team throws the ball a ton. A lot of their touchdown production comes via the air. Irv Smith is a guy who we've seen be a capable guy. Like, I mean, he, he's not a superstar or anything like that, but neither was Hayden Hurst, and he gave you usable weeks last year as well. So, yeah, I, I'm kind of drawn towards Irv Smith, Chiga Conquo, if he wasn't picked up in your league. Uh, there's going to be some leagues where Tyler Higby might not have been grabbed. If so, he's going to step into a monstrous volume without uh, Cooper Cup in the lineup. So, yeah, there, there's a couple options right there that I think you can consider. What do you think would be a, if we just use the prop tool for a second, we go to Irv Smith, just type in big Irv, put him right there. I don't know what his over under is off the top of my head in terms of what his receiving yards are going to be, but what do you think would be an acceptable, like if you were to replace Kelsey and you were looking for someone to stream, like what would you want that line to be? Do you think? Well, you know, with tight end specifically, we want touchdowns. So the, the yardage is a little less important, but yeah, you're aiming for roughly 35 yards or something from your, from a tight end of that caliber. Yeah. So let's just run, let's just run some simulations here on Irv Smith Jr. to see how often he goes over 35 and a half yards. His median, yeah, you, you almost hit it right on the dot. The median is 31 receiving yards, but we can change that out at the same time. And let's just put in, you know, DraftKings points, let's say, uh, and try to figure it out that way. And let's go to do DraftKings points. Where are we at here? Fantasy points. Fantasy points DK. Let's run it again, and we'll put the over under. I'm going to be a, a good – it's probably eight and a half, I'm guessing, where his is. That sounds about right, yeah. All right, so let's take a look at his over curve. So his over curve, the median is seven and a half DraftKings points. But you can see he, like, inches up into that, you know, 20 fantasy point range, like a non – zero percent of the time let's say probably like 10 yeah. percent of the time which is a pretty good that that's i yeah. think that's what you're looking for when it comes to tight end when you're looking for a streamer that's exactly right you want a guy who has a little bit of upside like the 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 waiver wire is full of guys who might be able to get you three catches for 30 yards you need that guy who's going to be in an offense that can score points and with just a little bit of variance on your side all of a sudden has a two touchdown game and now you're i mean th there's not a lot of difference between getting you know uh, an extra 20 receiving yards versus not getting it it's that touchdown upside at tight end that's going to carry you and propel you to that next level so so don't be don't take the safe way out take a guy who actually does have a little bit of ceiling. And I, I think Kakonkwo fits in that description as well as, as another guy who could, uh, you know, sort of lift the ceiling of your team. Let's see. Let's see Okonkwo to see how he comes out. And all these guys are going to have more probable unders than overs. This we know because tight end sucks, especially when you start getting into the depths of these guys. But uh, Chig, I, he actually levels out pretty nicely. Like his over 
basically 15 fantasy points is a much flatter part of the curve than Irv Smith's was. So maybe Okonkwo is actually the better one here, even though his medium projection is actually lower than Irv Smith's. Yeah, it's funny. It's, and that's that's the beauty of the simulations. These guys score their points in different ways. Irv probably is a little bit more of a yardage accumulator type, and Okonkwo uh, is a bit more of a big play type of threat, big red zone presence, that sort of thing. And so, yeah, it, it's it's interesting to see. Like, they can have different medians and actually have, uh, you know, a guy with a lower median can have a, a bigger tail. It's It's fun to see those guys. Well, let's go back to the Sim Runner and let's talk about Thursday night football and how we are going to approach this. I've already built some lineups as it stands right now, and you can do that too at runthesims.com, completely free for Thursday night football. So go get in on it right now. Should I just run everything and see what it gives us right away? Sure. Let's uh, let's turn off the pro. Uh, you can disable the pro mode and then um, just go ahead It'll and run, run everything quick. you have there. Yeah, we run super fast. So, yeah, uh, that's a power user tip. If you do have pro mode for Sim Runner, you can turn that off and get your lineups quite a bit faster. And so, yeah, you'll you'll sort of see as you build your lineups, or even before you get there on your input screen, there's four guys with the little red injury icon next to them. So four guys that we're kind of keeping our eye on. Well, really only three because Jamison Williams. Uh, he's got a, obviously a, a status alert there to let you know that he's out. You know, he's he's missing the first six games of the season this year. So you don't have to worry about him. And then three guys on the Chiefs side that we want to keep our eye on right now. Obviously, Kelsey, he's he's the big one, but also Kadarius Tony and Richie James, two guys whose role could obviously increase massively with uh, Kelsey being sidelined. So uh, Tony was a guy who got injured several weeks ago in practice. Um, seems to always be a little bit injured. It'll be interesting to see if they take it slow with him or bring him back. And then Richie James, his injury uh, is a little bit more up in the air, but he was a full full participant yesterday, so pretty much expecting him to play. Do you expect, I mean, based on what you have in terms of the market share of receiving, like 9% for Noah Gray, 4% for Blake Bell, I was surprised to see 18% for Sky Moore. So in my, what I think is going to happen is you're going to see a lot of targets to Jarek. I think that's going to end up being where some of those sky, I, I just can't see one fifth of the pass attempts go to sky more. That just seems inconceivable to me. So I'm going to drop him down to 14%, which means we need to make up 4% somewhere. And that puts Jarek in the 13% target share. And that's all I'm really going to adjust. Yes. But I put it in and just go with the stock ones, like the, the projected scores based on what we see. So 30 and a half points for the chiefs. And we have, what is that? 24, 25 points now for the Detroit Lions with a five and a half spread. So it, it's a situation where we can do, and we, we can go back anyways, 24 points, sorry, for the Lions. We can run back like a lot of different scores here. Like if you think the Lions are just going to win this game, we can run those simulations as well. But this is kind of the standard. I just made this quick adjustment on Jarek. How do you feel about Jarek, by the way? Because I think this is yeah, a great yeah, you're exactly right. When we went through and tweaked the the Travis Kelsey being out, it, it's funny because it, it it fundamentally changes the way we would expect the entire offense to run. And uh, Jarek McKinnon was one of about the three players that we identified as needing a significant boost in terms of how many routes we think he's going to be uh, participating in. So I could see McKinnon being a very big sort of like check down option, th those types of areas on the field where Kelsey uh, can often win sort of as like that last read option um, when Mahomes is bailing out of the pocket and just needs somebody needs a body to throw it at. Like Kelsey was so good at that. And McKinnon is also really good at that as well. So I, I think it makes a lot of sense for him to see uh, increased route usage here in week one. And yeah, I, I mean, I could see the hesitation on Sky Moore. Uh, I think what the, the reason that sort of Sky Moore projects out ahead of Valdez Scantling in terms of targets currently is because of the fact that Valdez Scantling has been a horrible target earner over the course of his career. And so even though he probably projects to run more routes, he's just never been one to soak up a ton of targets. That could obviously change and maybe something we'll look at a little bit. But yeah, Sky Moore, I think, is going to be a full time player this week. Well, we'll see. I mean, then you can boost them up too uh, in the custom projections if you want to. So the optimal players under the optimal results, Patrick Mahomes is now featured as a captain 41% of the time still, but that becomes really confusing. So how do you do this in terms of structuring a lineup? Because I mean, we can go to our custom lineups and you can just let the simulations tell you everything. The most optimal lineup of what I just ran through with the, with the stock generic game score, Mahomes is captain, Jarek, Tony, 
Valdez Scantling, Sky Moore, Jameer Gibbs, the 5 1 for the Chiefs over the Lions. Uh, I could see messing around with like Gibbs Montgomery lineups and then four Chiefs would be a way that I would think about it. Or even flipping that and going four Lions receiving game with Jarek and Pacheco or something like that. I could see those lineups being rather unique. I love the idea of playing Jarek and Pacheco in the same lineup. In fact, um, there are some really cool ways that we can force that to happen uh, with our simulator this year. So we'll go over that in a second. But yeah, like the slate changed astronomically without Kelsey being a part of it because the real complexity heading into yesterday was how are you going to fit some combination of Kelsey Mahomes, Jared Goff, like say what you will about Goff. He scores some fantasy points um, and he's a relatively expensive player, not quite at the same level as Mahomes and Kelsey, but still he's $9,400. That's, that's a lot of your salary. And, and you got St. Brown there as well. So it's like, how are we going to fit all these studs? Well, guess what? A ton of value just opened up. We now have one less expensive player to worry about. And so, yeah, it's, it's becoming a lot easier to build a really good lineup. Well, guess what? It's, it's easier for everybody. And so now we've got to try to like, there's these levels in DFS, right? Like you've got the like very obvious solution, which is what's the best thing to do and what's the best way to react. And then it's the second level is how are you going to react to everyone's reactions, right? So there's lots of cool ways that we can do this. And we've tried to make this as simple as possible at Run the Sims with our dupe predictor. So when you're at your custom lineups, not only are you seeing the frequency, which is how often that lineup was the nuts, you're also seeing a dupe predictor, which is uh, you know based on historical data and features of that lineup, how many times we would anticipate that lineup to be duplicated in a contest of that exact same size. So I didn't see, Pat, how many lineups or simulations you ran for that. I'm assuming maybe 10,000. Um, That's under advanced filters, right? That would be under settings, settings I think. Yeah. yeah, so mm-hmm. I ran 10,000 simulations. There you go, perfect. So you ran 10,000. So your frequency is showing you how many times out of 10,000 we would expect that to be the nut lineup, the best possible lineup. And the dupe predictor is saying how many times out of 10,000 would we expect the field to be landing on that same lineup as well? So if so, the field's so playing it... I, so what I have is, just for that Mahomes, that 5-1 Chiefs with Jameer Gibbs on the other side... 29 out of 10,000 is the highest that I have, and that will be duped 18 times. The best, like I have a lineup inside my top six. My sixth best lineup is Mahomes as captain with Tony, Valdez, Scantling, Richie James, and Sky Moore, and Amon Ra running it back. That's, you know, it's it's half the amount of times. 15 out of 10,000, that's still sixth amongst the ones that I ran, but it only has a 5% dupe rate because it leaves... 2300 on the table or something (laughs) that's exactly right so that's what the dupe calculator is doing is saying like hey there's something unique about this lineup that's going to get the field not playing it and so that salary remaining you just probably nailed it in terms of what it's looking at that says hey uh this is this is looks like it's going to be a pretty strong opportunity based on the projected ownership of the players in there and that sort of thing and so yeah i mean that's about as clear cut of a way that you can weed out lineups um and, and I think that helps you, you know, tremendously save time when building good, high quality lineups that aren't going to be total dupe fest. All right. So the, the one that I have that is the most duped right now, 46 of them, it looks like. Yeah, I got 46 of these dupes coming in here. It is Mahomes is captain, Amon Ra with Goff, Pacheco, Justin Watson, and Sky Moore. Now, Justin Watson is only $200. I think that you have a choice that you can make if that's the route that you want to go. And I think a lot of people are going to make this, be it Justin Watson or Khalif Raymond, because they're $200 and $800. Basically, you take one of those guys, you can build five studs if you want to. Do you think that's the way people should go? I think that'll be the way a lot of people are compelled to go. I think embrace the uncertainty there. Uh, I think Justin Watson will definitely be clicked on less than uh, than Khalif Raymond will. Like Khalif Raymond, I think, has a more clear uh, brand of being a big-time scorer in certain situations. So I think you'll see people uh, leaning on him a bit more. But, yeah, I've you're kind of asking the wrong person. I've lost so much money playing Justin Watson. I don't know what to do. So maybe he's not a, I remember there was a, a playoff game. I played him 149 times out of 150 and I just, I think he put up a zero. So uh, yeah, maybe, uh, I mean, he's, he's not very good. So, so take that with a grain of salt uh, and maybe ding him in the projections accordingly. 
Well, let, let's try to do this a different way and think about some of these things um, in a manner that maybe other people aren't. Because I think the the great thing about these tools at runthesims.com is if you have a lean on a game, you can kind of customize everything towards that. Now, you can go player by player if you want to and try to figure that out. But let's just say the Lions win by 10. What do you think? Do you think that's an over or do you think that's an under? Because we can run this both ways. I would see that being uh, being well. If anytime a team wins by double digit points, I tend to lean over in that situation. So let's just say it's a, a, a somewhat shootout, but the Lions are on the right side. Okay, let's call it thirty-one twenty-one. Perfect. Yep. For the Lions. Boom. Now, the and then also, rate- if I could recommend, let's increase their pace from fifty-seven to sixty. Yeah, and let's maybe and let's drop the Chiefs' pace from sixty-five to sixty. So not running as many plays and we'll just keep everything else the same and kind of let it roll to see what that gives us in terms of what we need to be looking for here. Let's run it. There we go. We're running these Sims to see what this new lineup looks like. And I'm guessing like when we get to our custom lineups and we get to everything that the optimal player is still Patrick Mahomes, although His captain level has gone way down from 41% to 25%. He is still the highest projected player. And the projections remain about the same in terms of which players tend to be popping. Although Josh Reynolds comes up a little bit more. The Laporta potty, he comes up a little bit more. Um, And we take a look at custom lineups. The the new best one with a one with one dupe out of 10,000. So very few people are playing this game script. Now, can you talk a little bit about trying to get a game script right? Because I was talking to Wiley about it. Now, he plays one game script for 150 lineups and just throws them in. But he was saying that a lot other people who play a lot of volume say, hey, I'm going to play two game scripts and do 75 and 75 or three game scripts and go 50, 50, 50. Do you have a preference? Yeah, no, I think you just got to find what works for you. I tend to like to... um I have a, I seem to have a different uh, take on every particular slate. Like sometimes I'll look at it and say, I think the edge on this slate is having the right sort of dust ball type player in your lineup. Like having that right Justin Watson, Khalif Raymond, uh, whoever, uh, you know, uh, maybe what's a Brock, uh, Brock Wright or James Mitchell. Yeah. You know, like the guys who are like th- at the very end of the bench, this is not a game where I think you need one of those guys necessarily or the ones who do bubble up to the top are going to bubble up because they're actually projected decent. So, um, but yeah, no, I think it makes a lot of sense to play around with a lot of different builds, but what I'll probably do a lot more of this year, especially with these types of tools that we have is run the base outcome and understand that it's going to have a lot of different sort of tail outcomes associated within that particular set. And then also, um, sort of i think the next level comes in how you want to filter all these massive number of lineups that we're going to give you after the fact so that's where i wanted to exercise my skill take the one script uh 100 of the time and then mix in uh the, the different sorts of lineup textures that i want to do i want some lineups that are going to look they're going to grade out really well because they're so low duped i want some that are going to um look great because they're so highly projected like i, I want to have a lot of different looks and feels uh, for that same exact script. So in, in this script, which again is a script that not many people are seemingly using because my top four lineups are all at a dupe rate of 1.07, 1.15, 0.5, 0.5. 5. So pretty unique. And all three of them are Jared Goff captains with Amon Ra, Gibbs, Reynolds, Khalif Raymond, and then Patrick Mahomes as the only chief. Or you could do it the other way. There's one of them that's in here that's a Valdez Scantling captain with Mahomes and then Goff, Raymond Gibbs and Amon Ra. I kind of like these lineups. They're fun and they're unique. And really all, all you're asking is for like maybe this, what I'd call like a 20th percentile outcome of this game. So a game where the, you know, the chiefs are not the same chiefs, you know, they look, they've got some holes in the armor and the lions look like a competent football team. That's not terribly hard to believe in a game without Travis Kelsey. And yet I don't think a lot of people are going to feel comfortable having fewer chiefs on their roster than they have lions. Well, I think it breaks down too. like the other way that this plays out, especially this Valdez Scantling captain lineup is 
you know, the Chiefs are still going to score 21 points in this is that they score three touchdowns. It's three passing touchdowns from Mahomes to Valdez Scantling. And then just the other guys on the Lions pile up points in different ways. But everything has to go through Mahomes and Valdez Scantling in this situation, which you know, probably isn't going to happen. But we're trying to get to the top of a DraftKings tournament that has a million dollars up top. And you know, what is it? 200,000 people in it. Mm -hmm. That's exactly right. And so, you know, one thing that the in this sort of heavy lion script, there's three players, the optimizer or the simulator here is really trying to give you. It's trying to give you Goff. It's trying to give you Amon Ra and it's trying to give you Jameer Gibbs, you know, the three primary pieces of this offense. And so the only way to do that is toss Mahomes in a flex spot because he's going to be too expensive to afford all three of those guys if he's in the captain. And then sort of who who sort of fits in terms of the captain uh, from there, you know, it's going to be a, a cheaper option from the chief side, um, you know, or, or maybe one of those premium guys from the Lions slides on over because of the, the projected number of points. So yeah, there's so many cool ways you can approach this. And then, you know, Pat, why don't I talk you through the advanced filters? Because I think this is going to be a, a really important way for how people are uh, building their lineup. So uh, under your custom lineups, uh, we can go to advanced filters and expand that menu and get lots of different ways that we can adjust things in, in terms of what lineups we're currently seeing. And so you'll see some sort of like fill in the blank type of rules, like lineup frequency must be greater than blank. So if we want to make sure that like we don't have any like total terrible lineups, we can say like lineup frequency must be greater than five or something like that. So that means that that lineup had to have been the nuts at least five out of those 10,000 times, um, you know, or you could say that lineups must contain at least zero, you know, one player with a projected ownership less than 10%, you know, maybe that's the way you say, like, I want to get at least one pretty crappy player in my lineup. Oh, so and, and, change... and it does it all in real time for you. I'm down to five lineups, by the way. <laughs> well, perfect. Yeah, because five is a pretty high bar there for the 10,000 Sims. Um, yeah. And so you're seeing some you're seeing some pretty low on types of players starting to populate. Uh, and one thing that's going to happen, too, I think, is the kickers and defenses are going to become a lot less uh, owned the more now that Kelsey's off the slate. Like you don't need that sort of mid tier. There's enough bottom sort of bottom feeding type salaries and then the premium guys as well. So you're seeing those ownerships drop quite a bit. All right. So I changed this a little bit. I made the score 20 to 17 for the chiefs. No one wants to play an under that. That sounds awful, especially in the betting market. I mean, who, who has an under ever hit in the history of people trying to predict games? Well, I can't imagine it ever has Pat. No, see that, that would be impossible. So let's run the Sims on this one. So I have the Lions scoring 17 points with 56 plays and the Chiefs scoring 20 points with 57 plays, just to see how that works out. So I think it's going to give us... We Do you think that we'll see more kickers and defenses in the mix now? Hmm. Uh, no, I, I think... I, I think you're still going to get leaned a lot more towards... Um, even with the low score, I don't think the defensive scoring is going to be super high in this game. Yeah, the, the Chiefs' D is the best of those four that I was talking about, and they end up as an optimal geez as a captain 0.3 percent of the time and they sh uh, sorry that's ownership flex rate should be 15 percent and less than one percent as a captain in this situation it's mahomes amon Ra, Goff. turns out these guys are good uh yeah. is what i what i glean from these simulations that the computer thinks they're really good uh didn't realize the computer had such good eyes to know that these are the good players then it's like gibbs pacheco mckinnon I guess Butker is up there as well in this particular situation, because I guess if you get to 20, they're assuming two field goals that Butker ranks ahead of like Montgomery, Josh Reynolds, Laporta, Richie James. And he is, let's see, a flex rate of almost 27 percent and a captain rate of one percent. Would you ever captain a kicker? Uh, I would under the right circumstances, not in this game. Like, not uh, it doesn't this... seem like the game. Uh, and with all <laughs> yeah. the advanced filters that we turned on, we do have a sub 1% or sub 1 predicted dupe with Pacheco as the captain and with Mahomes and four Lions. That's an interesting game script, isn't it? Including Riley Patterson. Yeah, uh, that's probably not the way where I'm going to want to play that game, uh, to be quite honest. That, that's probably pretty fair. I'm just going to reset the filters to what I had them to before. 
And we'll just get rid of zero on there. And boom. Uh, now we have our, our other big one lineups with this. And one of them is actually a super highly duped one. It's Mahomes with Velda, Scantling, and Jarek, Raymond, Goff, and St. Brown. I guess, is Jarek the type of, like, how do you try to distinguish between in showdown contest versus what we normally do in our week long competitions where, you know, Pacheco to pair with Mahomes and Valdez Scantling doesn't make a ton of sense because we don't expect him to catch any passes. There's no correlation with those lineups, but Jarek is kind of the perfect guy to put with them because you would expect yes. him to be a very high part of the receiving games. So they can both accumulate points along the way, but let's say you didn't want to play Jarek here because you didn't want to have this duped as many times. Are you fine playing a non-pass catching running back with their quarterback and just like, there's only, you have to pick six guys and he's one of them. Yeah, a Absolutely. The, the goal of showdown is not to get a 90th percentile outcome out of all six players in your lineup. It's, it's not that difficult. Like I don't need, I don't need the 25 point Isaiah Pacheco game for him to be in the optimal lineup. Like I just need him to have, 15 points or 14 points. Like all of that may be enough for him to elevate his way into the optimal. And it all just sort of depends on the texture of what's going on with the guys around it. How many points are they scoring? How many points are the cheapo guys scoring? If they're scoring reasonable points, it kind of eliminates the midfield and you end up with like the superstars and the, and the scrubs who happen to do well. So it's like, I would not, uh, I would not rule out, you know, sort of that anti-correlation between uh, sort of a run first quarterback and a and a uh, quarterback who's, excuse me, a, uh, a, I wouldn't eliminate Patrick Mahomes and the captain with Isaiah Pacheco in the flex. I actually think they're they're positively correlated in their medians. So um, and that's really all we're looking for. Like we want like a 65th percentile outcome for all these guys, just slightly better than they normally do. And that's going to be enough. Is DraftKings still running second half contest this year? Oh yeah. Um, it's, I, I wish they would post them a little sooner, like, <laughs> because they, they, they tend to not post some of these until the game actually gets going so that folks aren't confused when they're entering into their showdown contest. So once sort of uh, the ball's kicked off in the air, a lot of times you'll see the second half and fourth quarter options come live. And I would imagine they will be pretty juicy for the week one action. I, I would almost recommend as crazy as this sounds, like if you were going to put like, 200 300 bucks into this instead of just jamming it all into the ten dollar main one just do the second half and the fourth quarter one as uh, sky was telling remember sky kept winning them all last year he's like yeah i just go i just go to run the sims just stock optimize maybe adjust a thing or two based on what i'm seeing in this game and like people play though like there are so many sharp people playing the like overall big prize pool events on DraftKings for the main slate. It doesn't seem like any of those people are playing the second half ones. It just seems like drunk people at halftime just randomly press pressing names. I mean, it's only the losers who are already like dead in the first half with their like main event or lineup or whatever for the uh, for the main slate there. And uh, they're like, oh, I got to get it back. So, you know, they come into the second half lobby. You know, they're trying to put something galaxy brain together when all in all the, the perfect lineups just sitting there to be had by somebody. Well, are, do you think we can make those free for uh, the people? Just yeah. lock everything right after the game ends? Yeah, they're, uh, everything in SimRunner will be free. And that's exactly where you can find the second half and fourth quarter slates as well. So, uh, yeah, that'll be free all night Thursday. We'll turn everything back off Friday morning. And uh, if you liked what you did and uh, liked the experience you had with Run the Sims, obviously encourage everyone to uh, subscribe. It's two ninety nine dollars for the year. It's 10% off with code Mayo, obviously. Uh, we do have other packages available for sort of our premium level product, you know, which is on, on top of that. But uh, I think for, for most of our audience, that $2.99 is going to be well worth it and gives a lot of data points. I mean, you're talking about we run play-by-play -play simulations on now up to 50,000 uh, simulations, play-by-play -play through every game. And so uh, you're picking up on all that correlation. You're getting lineups made about as easily as you could possibly dream of with now filters outed on top of that so that you can still make, make your stamp on it with like the baseline outcome. So uh, I'm a big fan of it. Like I, I'm using it personally um, and couldn't be more proud of sort of where we are right now with the product. Yeah, it's getting better every single year. And you know, the price is still very affordable, especially with Code Mayo. You get that 10% off. I use it for my DraftKings lineups every single week. Tambo and I talk through that on Fridays, but I love using it for props and using the range finder and seeing the just even just like we did with the tight ends very early on. Like, how often do they actually go over this number? And when they do go over this number, 
how big is that? Like with Okongwo this week, for example, I probably wouldn't play as over under because, you know, it's, you know, 58% one side, 42. There's no advantage there when you're paying the VIG. Although when you looked at over his 15 fantasy points, and then you can dig a little bit deeper into it on Run the Sims to be like, oh, maybe I'll play some ladder yardage or ladder receptions here. Like, how does he get to these points that if his over under for yardage is going to be 38 and a half, well, maybe, fuck it, I'll just play him over 60 or something like that at three to one because it's actually showing me that this hits a reasonable amount of the time so for props i mean you can play any site dfs run the simulations for it uh any site in terms of props you can punch in your own custom odds or even for the pick'em sites they're all up there as well with their own simulator to tell you if it's an ev or a minus ev wager to go through everything so please go use it right now have some fun on thursday night i'm going to be in those second half showdown lobbies on drafting so you should probably be in there too because my lineups are going to be very good because i'll be using the system and it's completely free for you to use. So it'd be crazy not to use it at this point. All right. I'm Pat Mayo. Thank you all for watching. I'll see you next time. Experience. Experience.